Welcome back. We have established that the layout of this ship makes no sense. And as glitchy as this game sometimes is, I sincerely doubt that um, that is a mistake. And in fact, if you remember, Spock did mention that there was something weird about his sensor readings of this ship when we beamed over. So that may have something to do with it. We have not yet been to the right here yet, and I guess we can only hope that that does not lead to some place we've already been. It does not. That looks like this is where the king went to rest. This elderly individual lies on a bed, his eyes closed in sleep. He clutches a blue blanket tightly around him. It seems he is asleep. I don't think we can actually do anything with him here. Captain Kirk is not impressed with the housekeeping skills of the people living in this room. It's honestly not that bad. There's a few things on the floor. That's about it. I guess this bunk is a little bit uh, messy. It honestly could be worse. Anything else I can look at besides this kid over here? A youngster is sitting alone, quietly playing. He's just rocking back and forth as far as I can tell, but I guess we'll call it playing. A simple sliding door of reasonable dimensions for a person to walk through. Okay, that's good. We don't have a crouch, I guess. A simple sliding door. Um, nothing else of interest here. Captain Kirk is not impressed with the housekeeping skills of the people living in this room. Bones thinks the youngster probably needs to get out more. That's a nice thought, but... You know, probably not possible. <laughs> Unless there's way more to the ship than we've seen. It did look pretty big, so maybe there is. Otherwise, getting out uh, would be a short and painful experience. The wise-looking Vulcan raises an eyebrow. The alert lieutenant thinks those living here have made at least half-hearted attempts to put their personal stamp on their living space. Difficult, starting from institutionalized beginnings. I guess there's some point to that. Some truth to that, I mean. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. The sleeper ship. Is there a more primitive way to achieve star travel? There are generation ships, Captain. Although I hesitate to engage in speculation, these people might have been the descendants of the original passengers, not the passengers themselves. Given what I've seen, Spock, I don't think they'd survive as a generation ship. I'm surprised they've survived as long as they have. An astute observation, Doctor. I am impressed. As much as I hate to break up this newly formed mutual admiration society, we have work to do. Well, we already know that um, they were initially all asleep. And that the phase may have woken them up early. Or at least took much longer to get here than it thought. So it's possible that these are descendants of the original passengers. Although it seems they have, if that's the case, then they have passed on whatever mental defects um, their ancestors were banned from the planet for. I think the youngster looks a little wan, either from lack of the right foods or insufficient exercise, and there don't seem to be others his age he could pal around with. He's the only kid we've seen, so that could be a problem. Well, I guess they are almost at their destination, even if their destination is still in the middle of the city and we still don't want them to land there. I believe this room shows that this was, in fact, a sleeper ship, Captain. Notice the beds. They appear to be in general use now, but show every evidence of being cryosleep pods initially. It does kind of look like it, I guess. I'm assuming there's more than just this one room somewhere. As institutionalized as this, this room appears, Captain, you can see people have done a few things to make it more their own. 
I wouldn't be surprised if people stash trinkets away. Things that have use and meaning to no one but them. Then again, I am definitely not going to suggest we go looking. Some of these beds don't appear to have been changed in longer than I want to think about. However, if someone wants to show us one of their little treasure boxes, I'll bet it's been well hidden. Interesting thought. Maybe somebody does have something interesting stashed away somewhere, but yeah, let's not tear the whole place apart looking for it. How about this kid? Actually, can we scan him? This individual is a juvenile in good condition, although mildly undernourished. There's no immediate danger, but there's some traits that should be watched. He's healthy now, both mentally and physically, but he's at some risk if he's put under too much stress. Again, a reading that wildly differs from the on-screen text. This individual is a bit elderly, but not in too bad shape when you take that into account. He, he seems to be suffering some brain lesions that might be genetically linked to nerve degeneration in the lower back. I think that's the same description you get from scanning him in the other room. Let's try and talk to this kid. Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? I'm Stan Bob. Did my mom say I could talk to you? Why, yes, she did. What can you tell us about things going on here? Well, we met his mom. And she did talk about him. But I don't want to say that she actually, you know, explicitly gave permission for us to talk to him. So maybe we should not claim so. No, not exactly. We'd like to know what you can tell us about things going on here, though. I don't know that we've seen your mother. Still, if you can tell us something about what's going on here, we would appreciate knowing it. Well, we have seen his mother, so... Why, yes, she... No, that not exactly. this choice. We'd like to know what you can tell us about things going on here, though. I don't think my mom would want me to talk to you. Please go away and stop bothering me. Alright, well, that's not uh, very helpful. We know from his mom that he likes fruit though, so maybe if we can solve the plant problem we can get him to be more cooperative. I don't think it's possible to talk to the Sleeping King. The elderly alien barely opens his eyes to glance at you, then closes them and lies back. We were sleeping. The rigors of rulership are severe. Present yourselves if you must, else let me be. Nope, he is not up for conversation. So let's keep going to the right. Keep back! I don't recognize you, you strangers! Rakabak, Gormagon, you recognize these people? No, no Tuscan, we sure, sure don't. don't. Keep them away. Keep them away from me. They'll hurt us. They're out to get us, I tell you. Have I ever been wrong? No, Tuscan, you kept us safe, and we keep you safe. We won't let him get you. You people don't want to come any closer. Honest, I don't want to have to hurt any of you. It's just that Tuscan won't like it. I hope you don't mind, but you really have got to stay back. Protect me. They're after me. We'll hurt you, so just stay back. We really don't want to hurt you, you know, but you got to stay back. Oh, more See trouble. Here, Captain Claw. I told you those Federation scum would be nosing around behind our backs. The Klingon observers seem interested in remaining to watch what goes on here. Okay. They actually don't threaten you as long as you don't do anything. And this paranoid fellow over here seems to be Tuscan, who we know was responsible for smashing up the uh, computer archive in the room with the phase and puzzle wit. So, like I said, I don't like him. Seems like he's kind of paranoid though, which may explain a lot. And he has these two uh, big looking brutes to protect him, so I don't think we can get any closer to him. Actually, let's try that. 
Save new replace pre Oh yeah, I accidentally deleted the def save file. Save new game. Replace delete previous. Fine, we'll delete one. Save new game. And create a new one. I hate games with limited numbers of saves. It is very inconvenient when you're trying to make Let's Play and save in between every video. Oh, no, they just push you back. Guess I didn't need to make a save for that. Let's look around here. There seems to be some kind of playroom. Which I think is what the guy in the beginning told us anyway. A room which appears to be dedicated to leisure and recreational activities. At least that's what you can see past the crowd of people. Yeah, it is kind of crowded in here. <laughs> a lot of people. Still a big room though. What have we got? A door? A simple sliding door of reasonable dimensions for a person to walk through. And some kind of teddy bear. A fuzzy animal shaped toy that looks a bit like a bear. You like chess? Any good? Jake sees a whiz at it, even though he's pretty slow about everything else. My brother Rackaback took away his stuffed bear. Jake's he won't come in here to play no more. This is my greatest game ever. I'll give you the bear if you can beat me. Yeah, you can have the dumb bear if you beat my brother at chess. And if you don't cheat. Interesting. So he's been playing chess with Jakesy, the guy with the blocks? He definitely didn't seem that smart, but if he is good at chess and slower than anything else, he may be some kind of savant, I don't know. And this bear belonged to him. Maybe he will take that in trade for the blocks, which we do need for the plants, so... Guess we need to beat this guy at chess. Let's look around first. Uh, more first, though. Gormagon is a large person with a slightly cowed and uneasy expression. He bears a strong familial resemblance to Rakabak, but gives the impression of somewhat more intelligence. He definitely seems to be the more reasonable of the two. Rakabak is a large individual with a somewhat dull-minded expression, but wary and distrustful. He bears a strong familial resemblance to Gormagon, who is standing close by. A pillow. I guess it is a pillow. An overturned toy box. Pieces of wood and plastic. They were originally part of a toy. Somebody, presumably Tuscan, made a mess of this room. This appears to be an unusual metallic structure. No idea what that could be. Tuscan is a rather mangy looking individual of middle age. His hair is wildly disordered and his eyes wide and wary. He seems skittish and likely to burst into flight or fight mode at the smallest incentive. Yeah, let's not give him any incentive then. A Klingon officer whose direct and intense expression never wavers. I think those are the same descriptions from uh, when we saw the Klingons before. A Klingon crewman wearing a look of disdain and distrust. The captain seems most concerned with watching all the individuals in this room to be prepared for how they might react. Dr. McCoy thinks that this room doesn't look like a very good place to kick back and relax, especially under the present circumstances. He's got a point. Mr. Spock raises an eyebrow upon seeing this room is equipped with a 3D chess set but quickly draws his attention back to matters at hand. I guess he's interested in trying out this chess game? The lieutenant is making judgments about the other individuals in the room, finding some threatening and others interesting. But which is which? I must admit I've met friendlier people, Bones. Drug therapy. Primitive 21st century medicine. The people who built this ship must have thought that filling a person's bloodstream with chemicals could solve every medical problem. Well, sorry we didn't have magic hand-wavy doohickeys yet that just solve every problem. This Tuscan seems paranoid, trying to control everything. 
He's got a great fear of anyone fooling around with his mind. If he were a crew member, I'd suggest tranquilizers and a lot of examinations. But I don't think we can get close enough to tranquilize him. Not with these two around, anyway. I guess we could shoot them, but... Uh, let's look for a more peaceful solution, shall we? Captain, that chess game is fascinating. Is that all you have on your mind right now? Captain Tuscan bullies everyone. I think he's afraid of everyone, and that includes us. We should find a way to calm him down, I think. There must be some practical way. Perhaps we just need to see how he reacts to things, and then we can make a plan. Alright. Sounds like solid advice. Captain Kirk, dealing with Tuscan should be your first priority. Okay. You want help from me? <laughs> That's a laugh. My captain evidently regards you rather highly, though. I'll just say that Rackaback Rogue is clearly asking for a drubbing. I knew someone just like him back in basic training. That's surprisingly helpful from him. I listened to my brother Rackaback and to my friend Tuscan. They say we have to protect this room and keep anyone from getting into it. Tuscan's afraid. Watch what you say, Cormacan! You know I trust you! He's just afraid, that's all. That does seem to be the case. I'm more interested in a good fight than in talking. Alright, let's not talk then. But also not fight, if we can avoid it. I don't care who you say you are! You're evil monsters in disguise! You want to get by me and the only people I can trust! You want to get into the back of my brain! You want to rewire me and change the way I think! Go away! Go away! Go away! Or we'll hurt you and make you go away! Okay. Wonder if we can tell what's wrong with him. Jim, he has fairly extensive brain damage and may be causing paranoid delusions. It's also resulting in increased levels of hostility. His adrenaline levels run quite high, and there's been organ damage from the extreme stress. All right, well, that explains it, I guess. Gormagon is one of the healthier individuals on this ship. Except for emotional stress, probably the result of being bullied by his buddies here. He's reasonably sound in mind and body. If I had to, I'd feel confident about treating him medically. Like so many others aboard this ship, he's the victim of developmental genetic damage. A chromosomal misalignment induces a greater inclination to violence. I wouldn't feel confident enough to treat him medically without the full database of the Enterprise systems. His mismatched dialogue makes it very hard for me to know when to advance the text. Anyway, um, let's see if we can get that bear by beating this guy at chess. And Spock seems to be interested in the chess game, so he seems to be the guy to do it. Even though Kirk beat the computer at chess in the first mission. It's almost as if these missions were written by different people. Which I think they are. A complex situation. However, check and mate. How'd you do that? He cheated you, brother! He must have cheated you! No, that's a legal move. Here. Take the bear. I promised, and I do what I say. I think it's a dumb game. That's what I think of this game. I think it's a dumb game. That's what I think of this game. All right, well, you've made your point. That's it for chess, I guess, then. But at least we got the bear. So let's go and see if Jake C wants that. And if he will give us the blocks in return. Oh, 
All right, Jigsty. We got your bear back. Soft. Nice. You get blocks now? He gathers together the blocks and gives them out to you. Great. We can now get the blocks. You get blocks now? He smiles broadly as you take the blocks. Multicolored blocks, suitable for a child to play with. He still has some of them. And I don't see the bear anymore, but... Doesn't matter, we got what we need. Uh, we haven't been through this door yet, let's see where that goes. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> sure, makes sense that... Oh. Hi there. Makes sense that the, um, that this room is both to the left and above the one we were just in. Why not? Yeah, there's definitely something funky going on with the layout of this place. Alright, anyway, we got, um, blocks made of nutrient materials. So let's put them in the feeder. The blocks fit through the opening, splashing as they plunge into the liquid. However, I believe that they are not usable in their current state. No life form registration, Captain. The keg has only inert chemicals inside, none of which would sustain life, at least not in their present form. That is the same thing he says before you put the blocks in, so I'm not entirely sure if that's supposed to be a hint. But yeah, currently the uh, contents do not do the trick in reviving the plant. And in order to uh, get them in the right form, you need to heat them up again, for which you need to use your phaser again. The container heats up slowly and the sound of bubbling echoes from inside. You stop and the container quickly cools. I think that did it, Captain. Seems like it. Did the description change? I'm not sure. Still no life form registration, Jim. But we have succeeded in brewing up a nutrient-rich liquid ideal for these here plants. All right. That sounds great. You take the metal keg. Let's replace it where we found it. You settle the container back into the niche it was removed from. The feeder hose, looking shiny and clean, rides out on some mechanism and reattaches to the newly filled container. You hear gurgling and see the nutrient broth begin swirling through the liquid medium. The dying plants seem to perk up before your very eyes. They may seem to perk up before our very eyes, but actually nothing seems to have changed so far. These plants look green and healthy, with strong stems and shiny leaves. Although the narrator seems to think differently. Anyway, what you uh, need to do is just leave the room. And come back. Talk about your instant rehab. The nutrient additive is making these fruit-bearing plants grow at an astonishing rate. Seems like they're doing better. Things are definitely on the upswing now. These plants should be productive and healthy from now on. That is good to know. I'm sure people on this ship will be happy about that. This chlorophyll-based plant species has the capacity to produce edible fruits, which may offer significant nutrient value. These would be safe for human consumption, or Vulcan, for that matter. However, there are no fruit yet. And yeah, you just need to leave and come back again.
And would you look at that? Some nice juicy fruit. I'm assuming it's juicy. Can't actually tell. This fresh fruit looks and smells delicious. Ruby red and perfectly ripe. That is some fast growing fruit. These are at peak ripeness. They should be delicious. Unprocessed organic produce of high nutrient value to most humanoid races. Great, let's get some. The red fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. Okay, that's uh, maybe a little bit uh, weird way of putting that. This fresh fruit looks and smells delicious. Ruby red and perfectly ripe. Can we eat it? This fruit is perfectly ripe and delicious. Guess we can. Uh, got some more? The red fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. Um, would the Klingons like some fruit? The Klingon captain gravely takes the fruit, smells it, and takes a large bite from it. Thank you! This is good. And while my aid might disagree, some food becomes that much sweeter when it is shared. He did. Usually when I try these kinds of things in games, they don't work. Anyway. The red fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. We still need fruit for other purposes. It's nice that we can make friends with the Klingons, I guess. At least the captain seems pretty nice. For a TOS era Klingon, anyway. And we should probably tell her that uh, we fixed the fruit situation so she can stop being sad. Oh, quit following us. You got the plans to give fruit again, and I'd given up. Oh, I'm so happy. But I don't want to eat this. My son loves fruit, can't get enough, and I want him to have this. Please take it to him. He should be playing in the sleeping hall. I've warned him about not talking to strangers, but it's all right if you do so. You can tell him I said it was okay. All right, now we've got explicit permission to talk to him, and we can give him fruit, so... I'm sure he'll be a little bit more forthcoming this time. Oh, now he has the bear. Alright, let's give Stambop some of his beloved fruit. This is for me? Wow, thank you. Mom would really be happy. She has been so sad about not being able to give me what I like to eat. Even though I told her it was okay, she was really, really sad. Now she'll be really happy. Thank you. See if we can talk to him now. Hi there, remember me? Uh-huh. I remember. You want to ask me about something. Tell me about Tuscan and his friends. And this is again a situation where we can basically just go through all the options and ask him everything. So let's start at number one. Tuscan and his friends aren't nice to me. They're nice to my mom because they trust her, though. She's the only one that brings them food. Sometimes she brings me safe food, too, but she hasn't lately. I get pretty hungry because the safe food I put away in a secret place isn't any good anymore. Tell me about Tuscan and his friends. Interesting. So Tuscan will accept food from his mom. But not from anyone else. Tell me about the playroom. It's through there, through the east door. 
Tuscan and his friends have taken it over. They play mean, except they don't play mean to my mom. That's on account of they think she won't let the food be bad. Tell me about Tuscan and his friends. Tell me, tell me about your mom. Her name's Mom. She takes care of the garden, but she gets real sad a lot. She brings me fresh fruit, says it's good for me. I like fresh fruit, whole bunches. She hasn't brought me any in a while, and what I put away in a secret place isn't looking good anymore. Tell me about Tuscan and his friend. Tell me, tell me about, tell me about the food. The food out of the machines can make me feel really sleepy and not very good. Mom says it's because of the stuff they put in the food. Tuscan says it's poison and won't take any food from anyone but my mom. I put some good food away in a secret place, but the food doesn't look so good anymore. Do you want to see? Sure, why don't you show us? Looks like Uhura was right. He does have a secret stash. And he used it to put some fruit away, but it seems to have gone bad. I guess the fruit is a way for them to get around the fact that the phase is drugging all the other food. The youngster opens a hidden cabinet near him, and a sour smell like rotting fruit flows from the opening. See, it went bad. Let's take a look. It doesn't look appetizing, that's for sure. This lump of decaying muck no longer offers any appeal as a tasty meal, but you can recognize that's what it once was. Well, that's something, at least. Organics in an advanced state of decay, Jim. They're releasing some alkaloids which would induce sleepiness and suggestibility. However, the first effect this, uh, this mess would have, assuming anyone was stupid enough to try to eat it, would be extreme nausea, so it would never get into a sane person's system. Okay, interesting. I guess McCoy did suggest that it would be a good idea to try to tranquilize uh, Tuscan. However, even if we could get him to eat this fruit, it wouldn't work because um, apparently he would just throw it back up. Also, he probably won't accept food from us, only from Mole, from what Stanbop told us. Decomposing organics, Captain, including alkaloid compounds. Anyway, let's get it. It's slippery, sloppy, stinky, and goopy. But you collect what's there into a large specimen bag. You. Well, even if we can't feed him the rotten fruit directly, maybe there's still something we can do with it. And one of the uh, med tables in the food room could also be used as a workspace. So maybe we can do something with it there. And the Klingons are still hanging out here. They don't really bother you, though. They just keep showing up. Let's see what we can do with this. A light scans the reeking glop, and the computer screen lights up. The alkaloids present in this organic mass can be reduced to a high-potency tranquilizer. The undesirable emetics and purgatives can be eliminated. The resultant drug should be mixed with prepared food and eaten to produce a soporific effect. Do you wish to prepare the specified tranquilizer from this mix? No, Skip, it will just put this away and go on to something else. Yes, continue. Done. The drug is prepared. Bring over the food you wish dosed with the drug, and the tranquilizer will be added. Oh. The youngster Stambob comes to the doorway. Mom! These nice people got me some fruit. It's fresh and everything, so you don't need to be sad anymore. Son, I'm so glad. It means the plants are healthy again, and you won't have to eat food I'm not sure is good for you. 
Thank you, strangers. I'm going back to my room, Mom. But I wanted you to know. That was nice of uh, Stambop to tell his mom that. Actually, maybe she'll be able to help us. We need to be able to get the drugged food to um, Tuscan, after all. And it seems he only accepts food from her. I have to thank you again for what you did for my son. I was feeling so depressed because I couldn't give him the fruit I know is better for him than what the Fae's make in the machinery. I don't trust the machinery food. And that's why I tended the garden, made fresh food. Even Tuscan will eat food I give to him, and he doesn't trust anyone. If you ever need help, just show me what you want to give him. Good, that's what we wanted. We have the boxed food from the dispenser. So, let's try adding the uh, drug to that. A light scans the food box and the computer screen lights up. The food in this box has been prepared with standard quantities of tranquilizing alkaloids, calmatives, and euphorics. The drugs and chemicals added in preparation cannot be extracted without degradation of their potency. The high potency dosage of alkaloid tranquilizer you have prepared may be added now if you wish. Go ahead. No, I don't think we need to do that. Go ahead. Let's go ahead. All right, let's give that to Maul. For some reason, the box changed color. I'm not sure why. Tuscan will only accept food from you. You said you'd help us after we helped you. Would you give this to Tuscan? It's heavily medicated, but that might help Dr. McCoy here to do something so he's better off. I'll take this to Tuscan now because I trust you. Go back to him and show him your food. He'll call for me, and I'll give him this instead. He'll be a good boy. Okay, so we need to go back to him and show him some food. Which, right now, we don't have any anymore. So we need to get some in the next video.